so hello all. Uh, my name's Pete Lawrence. Um, as you might have heard, I work at the University of Southampton, uh, where I'm a clinical psychologist uh, and a lecturer in clinical psychology. And I'm leading what we call uh, the co-spy study, or sometimes we call the preschoolers study to distinguish it from the other studies you'll be hearing about later. Um, and I lead this part of uh, the overall project with Professor Helen Dodd, who's uh, based at the University of Reading. Um, and so I'm a, 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 as Emily said, I'm a person, uh, uh, I'm a human, uh, and I'm just getting through this situation. Um, uh, but professionally, I'm a clinical psychologist, and what I'm really interested in is trying to understand children's development in adverse situations, um, and where I've previously had the good fortune to work clinically with parents who are struggling with their own mental health. Um, this current set of circumstances, of course, is giving us um, a really interesting opportunity to try to understand how especially um, children are coping with these adverse circumstances that we're all facing in our own ways. So I'm going to tell you just three things. Um, I'm going to tell you about the CoSpy study, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what our findings are to date and uh, a few simple tips on some practical parenting. So the CoSpy study, well, um, who is participating? Um, well, in the UK, we have parents and carers of preschool aged children, by which we mean uh, children who are aged two years plus. Um, in Scotland, this can be up to five years because children can start school up to age five and a half, but typically it's uh, two to four year olds, so preschoolers. And so far we have about um, just over 3,000 uh, parents and carers have begun to take part in the study, which is great, but we really want to push that up to about 5,000. Um, we found uh, that we have an even balance of child, uh, preschool child gender, um, but sadly an unsurprising imbalance in uh, the parents and carers who are participating in the preschool study. Um, it's over 3,000 females, meaning under 200 or so males. Um, and we have a, a, a fair spread of child ages at two, three and four. And what our families are doing is completing online surveys. Um, and this takes uh, up to between about 15 and 20 minutes when they first join the CoSpy study. And then once a month, each time after uh, they've begun, they fill in a follow up survey, which has fewer questions. So only tends to take about 10 minutes. And then really importantly, I suppose the most important thing is why are we doing this? Why are these families helping us? Well, as Kathy already um, outlined, it's so that we can really understand how families have been getting on. And this means both um, how parents themselves are coping, what it is they're doing and the sorts of help they would want. Um, and also, of course, it's how parents and carers think their preschoolers are getting on and what it is that they want um, to help them in the, uh, in, 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 during the COVID pandemic. And then also um, we do want to be sharing our findings because um, this isn't just another uh, survey for the interest of us as researchers, rather it's that we really want to be getting our findings out there to people um, and you'll be hearing more on this from Dr. Polly Waite after me, um, to, to people who are in a position to influence policy and to get help out to families and to preschoolers and to school aged children. Um, so uh, that, that's really our main driver, to make sure that the help is getting to the, the families. Um, so, so far, uh, how have we recruited people? Well, um, yeah, we've been using social media, um, doing events such as this, as Cathy said, hopefully some of you might want to participate after this evening. Um, we've had some support from some organisations and charities, um, for example, childcare settings using distribution lists and so on. Um, and more recently, we've been getting some um, interest from media, include, so uh, uh, Helen Dodd um, has written articles in uh, The Conversation, the online magazine. Um, and one of our poor team was uh, somewhat of a rabbit in the headlights uh, having to go on television recently, but lived to tell the tale. Um, so perhaps most interestingly for you, our findings so far, 
Um, just going to give you three headlines, really. And of those parents and carers who um, become part of the COSPI study, very nearly three quarters of, of, of these parents and carers felt that they'd been unable to sufficiently meet the needs of both their work um, and their preschool child. Um, well, I'm wondering whether to slightly divert from uh, the thread here and say that it's a very unfortunate word that we only have work in English, in the English language, where clearly looking after a preschool child is somewhat like work. I think it should have been questioned as a, a paid employment, but you get my point. It's, it, it's the challenge of making that balance between their occupation and meeting the needs of their preschooler. So very, very nearly three quarters feeling unable to do that. These parents and carers who participated told us that the top three sources of stress for them have been uh, their occupation, the amount of time their children are uh, using screens, so um, tablets or mobile phones or laptops such as I'm on, but also their children's well-being. And then very interestingly, what the parents and carers have told us is that they think the most uh, strong or most common worry amongst their preschoolers is that their preschoolers have been missing out on having contact with their peers, with their friends, They're just sort of routine activities, whether that's just a, a, um, playing in a playground together or attending social gatherings, you know, birthday parties or whatever it happens to be, or just going along to sporting events. So those seem to be um, the key things that we've, we've learned so far from um, the, the thousands who have um, helped us start to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm just going to move on to um, make some hopefully helpful suggestions. Um, and what you can hopefully see on your screen at the moment it, it is perhaps familiar from uh, if you've ever been on an aeroplane um, and, and actually listened at that time when, when, when the ladies and the gentlemen are doing their twirly things with the vests and the whistles and the whatnot. The point here is that we as parents have to be looking after ourselves. Um, and the principle that's illustrated here in the diagram is that what we have to do, if we want to be useful to our children, is to look after ourselves first sometimes. So in that emergency that can occur on an aeroplane, when there's a drop in cabin pressure, your oxygen mask will fall from overhead. And if you're traveling with children, put your own mask on first. Now this might fly in the face of our instinct as parents, but if we're going to be useful to them, we need to have that supply of oxygen ourselves. Otherwise, they will have a mask, but perhaps a parent who's passed out for lack of oxygen. So that same principle applies every day of life, I would argue, um, whether you're on an aeroplane or not. Um, but certainly during, during this pandemic, we must look, be able to look after ourselves and recognize that part of being a good parent is making sure we, aren't, we, we recognize that doing things for us is actually allowing us to do a better job of looking after our children. Second thing, um, very simply, play. Encourage our children to engage in play. Um, and, and, and especially uh, what we would call sort of free play or unstructured play. So um, I'm sorry, this is a somewhat stereotypical image of boys perhaps making weapons. Um, but it's what they've chosen to do in that situation and they're just getting on with it. It doesn't mean that we have to be directly involved or taking a lead in anything, rather it's that we can join in, we can be alongside, or we can just let our children creatively play as they want. And as sort of associated with that is this idea of if possible, if you're fortunate to have access to space, whether it's a park or you, you live in the countryside or whatever it happens to be, to encourage our children to be physically active. And that's sort of picking up on uh, the NHS guidelines of how active preschoolers should be for sort of up to a few, at least three hours a day. And you might sort of think of it as like the, the five a day of fruit and veg guidelines, where four a day is way better than three is better than two. So even if you can't manage the three hours, get them out for two and a half, get them out for two, whatever you can, it's gonna be better than not. And then the final tip, is to sort of embrace this idea of imperfection. And hopefully this is news to no parent, but whether we're in this um, pandemic or not, uh, we're facing this situation of walking a tightrope while spinning plates and recognizing that it's 
next to impossible to keep all those plates spinning um, and therefore to accept that we are going to be dropping uh, some plates and recognizing that that's completely normal it's uh, almost to be aspired to because we don't want to set uh, unrealistic examples and um, it, 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 it's really important that we know we're all in this same situation together and that we 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 let on to each other about how much of a difficulty we're finding being the parents we want to be okay so I'm going to say thanks ever so much to all of you for joining us this evening and uh, goodbye from me for now <laughs> some of you may already be taking part in these studies um, and if you are, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, please keep going with it. Um, these studies are called CoSpice and CoSpace. CoSpice is a study that's specifically focused on preschool children and how they're getting on during, um, during the pandemic and how their families are getting on as well. And CoSpace is focused on um, primary and secondary school age children, so from four to 16 years of age. And again, it's very much focused on understanding how children and young people are getting on, how their families are coping, and trying to really understand what's helping families um, through this time, what sorts of things seem to be supporting children and young people in terms of their mental health and well-being, what sorts of things are um, causing challenges for people. And as you'll hear as we go on, um, we're really um, trying to make sure these findings can be as useful as they possibly can by regularly feeding them back to people who can use them to make a difference and make life easier for families.